And so, well, I guess, yeah, so here I also specified a nice default. So if I'm interactively running the thing, I, you know, I kind of default the Firefox. And then um, on the project configuration side, so, um, so this is the metrics job type that I mentioned earlier. So I'll be checking out the source code from subversions. Um, and then here is where the configuration axis so I, ex I define the name of this axis to be browser. And then I, I specify three distinct values. So one of my tests would be on Firefox 3.0. Um, another would be on Google Chrome. And the last one would be Internet Explorer. And then here I have the tunnel set up. So the auto is the, the magic that, well, I guess, yeah. So there's a documentation on that if you want to see those things. The auto is the magic keyword that makes Hudson generate this host name. And then um, the port, this will port the connection uh, back to the local host port 80. So in this case, my local host, this laptop, is actually running Hudson on port 80. So uh, the idea is that I'll be testing Hudson. So that's, that's basically all there is to it. So now I can build this. So um, yeah, so you start checking at the source code, and you should start soon start seeing these like three parallel builds. So one is building Firefox, another is doing Internet Explorer, there is yet one more that's doing Google Chrome. So Hudson is now running three tests in parallel by using the uh, source on demand. So let me see. So now it's as I configured, it's now starting the uh, SSH tunnels with the server. And I think um, you can s actually see it here that they are being started. I hope they come up relatively quickly here. So in this way, I guess I can show you some of the earlier success or the failures here that, um, so let's see. So in this case, I this is the one that I, I, I did earlier in this morning where the everything successfully run. So you can see that you can go into each of the specific configurations and you could see you know, what the console output it produced and the test results that are created and so on. But so in this way, if one of them fails, you, you notice it right away without sort of digging too much into the details. So hopefully it's making progress now. Yeah, so I guess the thumbnail is successfully up now and so it started running tests. So this one is testing Firefox, so it will it should you know, complete in no time. Yeah, so I guess that's done. Now. Um, yeah, I guess it's almost yeah. So now everything is complete, and I guess we sort of successfully run the test on the um, on three browsers concurrently on the cloud, and we get the test result aggregated like this. So let's see. Um, so um, before I close, um, the so the a bit about my company. Sorry for the shameless plug here. Um, <laughs> I, I said I, I just started. I so I left Sun uh, a few months ago, and I'm now offering the support subscriptions around open source Hudson and plugins. And uh, we are working on the commercial Hudson distribution that provides some body add features. So. And then the other thing we, uh, we do is we provide the consulting services. So often people, are new, people who are new to CI could really use some external advice to get things going in the right shape. Um, or if you've been using Hudson for a while, there's normally several things we could notice right away and they make some corrective suggestions. Um, so uh, with that, I guess the, um, the I think the, the content to wrap this up, the idea of continuous integration, I think, is really here to stay because it's really driven by the economic trend that's beyond our individual control. So in that context, I think using lots and lots of PCs, the computer cheap PCs, is, is going to be a key for enabling more additional productivity. And I think tools like Hudson is in the right spot. And certainly tools like Selenium is a prime example of this kind of tool that require a cluster environment. And then hopefully, the, I was able to show you that the Hudson is very easy to get started. 
And then once you start it, then you can do a lot of very sophisticated things <coughs> down the road, you know, like these running tests concurrently on the server in a way that you can vi you know, visualize all the reports. And there's a good deal of Serenium integration because lots of the users in Hudson community are naturally Serenium users. So people have written a number of plugins in this space, like the ones that I showed you earlier. So hopefully, uh, you, you, you know, you'll start using Hudson. And if you notice anything, please let us know. So, so one of the things I was afraid was that the Serenium, talking about these Serenium things might take a long time. So I sort of moved this whole distributed build slide into the back. But sounds like I have enough time now, so let me do that. So, um, so I, I guess I briefly mentioned earlier that the, one of the Hudson's capability is to be able to effectively utilize a larger number of computers. And, and so the reason that that's, that's very important is quite simply that there's only so much thing that the single computer can do. Right? So as you start to rely more on Hudson, and then if you start doing lots more things in Hudson, the single machine just doesn't do. So um, that's why we spent a lot of effort in making sure that you could run a fairly larger number of computers without sort of breaking your neck. That is, the main challenge of using lots of PCs is not that it's hard, but it's just lots of work, lots of tedious grunt work. So you know, the, we thought about the kind of things that the Hudson can help there, and then uh, implemented those. So, so this support starts with installing sort of new slaves. That is how we call these machines in the form. So I used to maintain a pretty big cluster of machines, about 30 or 40 machines inside Sun, you know, the Hudson cluster that we use for our work. So the first 20 or so slaves, we basically install these slaves manually. So the way you know, we acquire these new machines, and they have to be installed by the right operating system. You know? So we were big on Saris and Linux and Windows. So we had to have the right number of right slaves. You know? So initially, we were installing them manually by meaning inserting the CD you know, and then manually clicking the buttons and the, the typing keyboards to install the system. But the installers, um, this just doesn't scale very well because the installer kind of takes a long time. It's designed to be interactive. So you, know, you have to like, click the Enter button to start get the installation started, come back after five minutes to type a few more information, and then click OK. And then the, browser, I mean, the installer thinks 10 more minutes, and then again, it comes back with some information. Right? So doing this in a <coughs> A larger scale doesn't work very well. So I implemented this plugin called Hudson Pixie plugin, which automates deployment. So the way this works is that you got the Hudson master on the network, the machine that you install Hudson, and then you install this Pixie plugin. And then the, uh, in addition to that, you need the operating system ISO images of the various you know, things that you want to install. And then you bring in a new slave, a new computer, that might, may or may not have anything in its HDD. And then you connect to the network and power, and then you know, the power it on. If you hit function 12 while the machine is booting, uh, most of the modern PCs will start booting from the network, which is called the PXC. The pre, I think that's called the Pixie boot mode. So the Hudson plugin at that point starts interacting with these slaves. And it will give you the, the choice of the, the uh, operating system that you configure on the master. So you can choose the uh, OS that you want to install. And then you could choose the ins automatic installation for Hudson. You could actually also do normal interactive installation, which my, my colleagues like a lot. That is, when they acquire their laptop or desktop, they can come to this service and then get the uh, whatever operating system installed without having a CD. But in your context, we are more interested in automatic installation from Hudson. So if you choose that, and then the rest will happen automatically between the slave and this master. And then the machine debuts itself and shows up as a, as a functioning part of the network. And so one of the key innovation here is that the normal implementation of PXC, Pixie boot, requires cooperation from the DHCP server guys. And then I don't know about the network guys, but in Sun, those are, they, they are pretty draconian folks. And they certainly couldn't care less about anything like Hudson. Right? This is something that. They, they defend with vigor. So one of the, um, <laughs> one of the key innovation here is this plugin works without making any changes to the DHCP server that he is running. 
So, and then they are not going to notice whatever happening in your network. So, so you don't have to talk to your operations guys, and you can just make this whole thing work, and everyone is happy. <laughs>